Okay, before the episode starts real quick, I gotta go to the wizard. He was gone last episode because so he's working on a special project for me, so let me just go get him real quick. Hey wizard, you can stop writing all the jokes for my videos. We've got work to do. Let's go. Hey everyone, I'm Clever Boon Boon. Clever Boon. Hey everyone, I'm Clever Balloon, and welcome back to episode 10 of Minecraft. So uh, we're here today. Wizard is back with us, as you saw in the little intro clip. And we have a lot planned. So uh, I have a couple things I want to do today. I think three main things. One, we're going to do some more work on the gardening area. We want to actually make a barn because we don't have currently no area to keep animals. Uh, the second thing we're going to do is we're going to build the second layer of the entire wall. And that's going to be a lot of fun. The third thing is something we're going to do right now is because... As you can see, I've expanded the map a lot. We are completely running out of map space. It's just stretching out here, and the map looks really cool. Seeing all the stuff we have the gardening area, and you kind of see the whole walls taking form now. And uh, we can't actually see the mommy subscribers. And so what I want to do is basically make a whole map room where we can have the map on the floor as a big table. And uh, yeah, we can basically just expand it a lot more and see a lot more of the base. So we're going to go to work on that right now. And my idea for it is basically I want to do it on the second floor because the second floor is actually pretty cool. We have the idea room up here and we have the nice tree room, but we pretty much have nothing else. There's not much up here and this looks really nice. So I want to find some kind of area where I can actually put the compass room up here. And I'm thinking we should do it right in the middle of the actual tree room. And uh, yeah, so I'm thinking right here I've kind of made a doorway and we could just have the whole uh, map room right here. So I think we're just going to get started on that right now. So we're going to build the floor. So we have the floor built out, and how we're going to do this map is we're basically just going to start with a 5x5 map, and we're going to use glowstone under the map, so it basically keeps the whole thing lit up, and it's not shaded all weird. And then so we just do this like here. And we'll basically surround the whole thing in, in a dark like trapdoors to make like a table appearance, because I think it'd be cool if this was kind of like the meeting room, almost like how war rooms are, where they have the whole map in the center. And uh, this is basically going to be the size of the map for now, and I'm going to include just the centerpiece of the map. I think it's... Oh, yeah, that's correct. Oh, this is cool being above it. So you can see that's the front of the castle, which is just out there. It looks different when you're viewing it from above, but soon we're going to have a whole map out here. Currently down there, we're using a 4x4. This is a 5x5, so it's bigger. If we need more, we can always expand it. But uh, that should work for a while. And it looks pretty cool. So now we're actually getting into the next bit. And uh, yeah, I'll show you how to set that up. So the next part of this is going to be really fun now that we got the map started, I finished the table, we're just going to add some more maps later. But for now we're actually into the ceiling of this room, so for the ceiling of this room I got some concrete. I'm actually going to make a huge upside down compass for the ceiling, I thought that would be pretty cool. Considering you know it's a map room and... Hello. <laughs> it's a map room and the compasses are connected to them. So we're just going to have a small border like this, I have light grey, we're going to fill in the center with uh, dark grey, and then we're just going to have a needle that points in a random direction. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to do it like this. Did I mess it up? Nope, I'm good. We'll cross like this. And it's just gonna have the circular rim. In the background of it will be gray. And it should look pretty good. We should have plenty of room to walk around on top of the map and stuff. And here we go. This looks pretty cool. We got the compass done. It doesn't look perfect, but looks good enough. You can tell what it is, that there's a compass at the ceiling pointing in just a random direction. We've got all these cartography tables and a bunch of little blue lanterns hanging. And we got most of the map up here. This was everything that was there before, but now it's actually flat and laid out. This is really cool to see. Like, you can actually like walk over the mountains kind of over here. You can see all the rivers, uh, swamps up here, lakes down here. And we absolutely need to add the monument subscribers. You can see the little bridge going to it, and the path kind of goes along here. You can see there's some glowstone. So that's probably the next map we add is my subscribers. But we're actually going to do the whole thing. We have some ocean down here and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, we're going to do that real quick. But uh, yeah, it's really cool. Like it, I guess it kind of offers a different perspective being right above it. But um, yeah, this is just the height of luxury, being able to take just a brisk walk within your castle map. <laughs> it being big enough that you can just take a nice jog within it. That's great. Yeah, so we're just going to build the rest of the maps, and we'll be right back, and we'll show off the entire thing. Yeah, I'm loving this room, though. It's great. It's on the second floor, so we actually have, like, a reason to come up here. And so the entire map is done, and now to get to the part I've been waiting for forever, we're going to build the second layer of the whole wall, and on the, and the gardening side, we'll all the way up to the top, so we can start on that right now. <laughs>
is a nice flower. Oh yeah, I also did that, but you know, that's not as important. So anyway, the time lapse just ended. It was a lot of fun. I actually had to cut the time lapse really short. I didn't really mean to do that. I decided to do some experimenting with the build, and I think it looks amazing. But I basically had to cut the time lapse short because I had to do it like in really choppy little bits, and I figured that would look really weird. And I want to focus this episode more on actually like building content. But um, yeah, this is officially my favorite part of the castle. This is so cool. So basically, I did the original like standard part of the castle where it just goes up normally. But I decided for the second layer, or actually third layer now, to push it back one and make like this outside walkway area, and then put the windows, and then I just add tons of leaves and stuff, and ah, this looks crazy. But um, yeah, let's go up there real quick. So the door here, because of the way the hallway is upstairs, I'm gonna have to put like the door pushed back and just a dirt path through here. Make a little temporary ladder. So I can go up onto the, I think it's the second floor. Let's go in here, open this door, and then we have this nice big like grass path inside into this cool roof. I think it looks really good though. But uh, yeah, I added like these fences and stuff, and then we got the doors, which these will go to the perimeter walls, and they'll make these huge hallways that go to that corner and then back over to that side, and we'll actually probably link that up in this episode. And uh, same thing as usual where, you know, you go up there and you have that viewing area just like on their side of the wall. But it looks really cool. I'm so proud of this. So anyway, though, we're going to get right into our next project right now, which eventually I'm going to fill in all these hallways and all the walls and stuff. I'll do it off camera because I have more time to do that. Right now, though, we're going to go on to the main project of today. So we are going to actually be building a barn. So we have no place to keep animals. So I'm going to continue this dirt path over there, continue it around, and make a big door right around here. And then make a whole indoor barn kind of area where it has like rafters and like hay and then just all the stalls and stuff, the animals and horses. And we're going to have all that and then finally be able to far farm animals like an actual way. So we're going to start on that right now and I'm just going to start clearing out a little bit of this area and I'll cut back. So here we go, I cleared out this big area and I opened up this bottom part to basically add like a door. And then I cleared out a huge area in here because the entire barn is actually going to be this cool plus shaped kind of thing. So you can come through here and there'll be stables on either side there and there. And uh, there'll be a big open center area, and we're actually going to make an automatic sheep farm. And first, I'm going to do a quick time lapse right now, where I'm going to build the frame of the whole place. Let's get to that. Dramatic entrance. So here we go, the Thomas is over, and uh, yeah, this looks pretty cool. It looks a little bit like the Kelp Farm, how it's kind of curved, but yeah, it's awesome. It's pretty big in here. I had like a dome little skylight thing that Wizard suggested, and now we're ready to do everything else, but I've done way too many time lapses, so I'm just going to cut ahead and show a couple things being done. And also, as a cool little entrance, the hallway connects up here, and then there's hay bales, which hay bales reduce your fall damage in case you didn't know, so you just land straight in here with no damage, and then you know, we still have the front door that we can always use. But uh, right now, I'm actually going to extend these up and create little lofts for hay and stuff like that. 
And here we go, I got, I got a lot of the supports done, so now I can start collecting animals and putting them in. And also we can start putting hay on top of the lofts, which actually look pretty cool, like kind of a hay bale effect just kind of spilling over the tops. But yeah, I'll just get working on that. So here we go, I've bred up some cows, some pigs, sh some over here, some chickens, and sheep. And uh, most of these sheep, we're going to leave some here, but about, I think, 16 of them, we're going to move over to these walls. Because I'm actually going to start working on the little uh, wool modules. So just right over here, I can start each one, we're going to have one for each wool color, and it should automatically gather wool. I'm just going to do one sheep per color, just to kind of passively gather wool, because I'm not going to need, like, ridiculous amounts of wool constantly. And uh, how each chamber is going to look, I'm just going to use uh, concrete of each color for each sheep. I can just do it like this. And uh, block up there too. And then basically I'll also have glass that goes down the front. And then for each one I'll have this style. And then I'll show you all the redstone behind it. But first I'm going to make each color that goes along each wall. So I have eight of the modules done. Except for some of the redstone. And I have this one done with a red sheep in it. And uh, basically the design is pretty simple. I just have grass right here. And two other grass blocks with some uh, what's called transparent blocks. You're like half blocks. Right here. That way the grass can just spread here. And replace the grass once the sheep eats. Then you just have a dispenser with some shears in it. And if I've done my redstone right, I should be able to hit this button, which is just directly linked to that uh, dispenser. So if I hit it, there we go, it shears the sheep. So I can't pick that up, so right now I'm actually gonna, not right now, I'm gonna finish all of these, and then I'm actually going to make a lower system that collects it with a hopper. And I'll show all that off in a second, right after I finish the rest of the tanks. And now all the sheep pins are done, we have some over here, and we have some over here, and they're producing a ton of wool. Uh, the orange one, I have no idea how. We were just talking about this. Somehow an Enderman, like, teleported in here and then broke the grass, and I found it over there. Anyway, it was super weird, but I'll fix it later. But, yeah, this is super cool. It's producing absolutely tons of wool. This is just already, like, it's over a stack for each one. And, uh, this is way more efficient than we thought it'd be. We have some of the main colors over there, and then we have some other colors over here. And you may be asking, why do they put the chests on this side and on this side so they're backwards? Well, uh... And there we go, last couple pieces, and... Wait. Ah, oh, wizard, I built it on the wrong... Anyway, so I'm going to show you guys some of the redstone. So basically, behind the chest, it's pretty simple. I, I think I already showed how the main system works for actually delivering... Uh, actually, sorry, no, I didn't, sh I didn't show this part. So basically, this, this part's pretty simple, if I can get through my redstone. An observer basically looks at the grass underneath each sheep, and then it comes up here, and it uh, hits this dispenser, which hits the shears, which then shears the sheep. Then we have a minecart hopper that goes under all the sheep right here, and it collects all the wool. Then basically the minecart just comes up around here, and it goes onto this power rail of this hopper. This compared to text whenever items flow through it. It raises this redstone uh, block with a piston. Basically you have to use pistons and redstone and bedrock addition because it's all weird. And then once you do that, it turns off the rails, so if items are in the hopper, it'll basically freeze right here, deposit all of them, and then it'll keep going. And that's the same way on both sides. And yeah, I think we're about ready to end of the episode. Hey, what's up? What's going on? Did you build something? Switch to end the episode. Wait, will this actually- No, we can't do that. We can't just end the episode. We need to go to the Mime subscribers. We have to thank our subscribers for them all subscribing. No, we can't do We have to go over and thank them. Because it'd be rude if we were just to, admit, like, not do that now. And to make a separate episode that will come out in a couple days. Where we just independently thank them. And, no, dude, we, do, we can't do that. We need to actually- We need to thank our subscribers. We are very thankful for them. We, we can't do that. Okay, bye guys.